Hey Turtle Nerds, welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be showing you how I clean and do a water change on my little indoor 75 gallon turtle pond. So I do this process about once every week or so, and this is even after feeding the turtles in a separate tub. They still kind of make a mess in their normal enclosure. And so of course, over time, it does still get dirty. But like I said, I do this every week. It's in order to keep the water in really clean and pristine condition because otherwise the turtles can kind of get funguses and diseases and other nasty stuff like that. And then it can start to smell and I sleep roughly six feet away from this tub. And if it starts to smell, we're gonna have a problem. So let's get right into it. This is kind of right outside my dorm. What I like to do is put a little door stop very high budget here at Dan McGuffey Man Productions, quality. And so what I did was I 100% purchased and did not simply find on campus some hoses that I decided to take and put over here. This black hose kind of has a very big outlet. Once I get the siphon started, there's a lot of water that's rolling through it. And so it basically drains the water very quickly. So I find this end, which is bigger than this one, keep that lower than, uh, than the, the starting point of the siphon. That's kind of how they work in order to get something siphoning. The destination end needs to be lower than where the water is actually entering. So because it rained, I like to clean this off and kind of bring it around here into the dorm and just kind of wipe with a paper towel as I drag it in because I'm not trying to track mud and any garbage into the dorm. Gotta be respectful of everyone who lives here. So now I need to get the siphon started. And in order to do that, you can either go on the other end of the hose and suck in in order to get the water flowing, or I have an easier method where I simply stick this next to the outtake of my filter that pushes water into here, forces it through, and begins the siphon. So now I need to do that, which is a bit of a process. A cameraman is necessary because it's a two-handed process. I try to stay as clean and keep everything as sanitary as possible. After I do this, everything is Clorox wiped, everything is clean, dried off, and I do my laundry and wash these towels. So I have decided to voice over this section of the video simply because some people are being a bit too loud in the hall for me to use the original audio, but basically the filter stopped working and therefore I was unable to use it to begin the siphon. So I thought that I would show you another aspect of the maintenance of the tub, which I do in conjunction with the water change, and that was me cleaning out the filter. Now I tried to keep the tub as clean as possible, so I use a container to quickly place the filter in, and what that does is it stops any debris that was in the filter from coming out as you pull the filter out of the water. The water will exit the filter quickly and pull out any material or debris or fish or turtle waste. As you can see, there is some at the bottom of this container and we would rather get it in the plastic container than in the turtle tub. Right, take my hose. all the hot waters out. Excuse me. And then I use this little surface right here for blasting all of the filter cartridges. So first I clean it off so nothing gets in them. So there's all kind of uh, dirt and mulch and things like that on this patio. So I just kind of blast it Make sure it's all off first. Then we take the filter, stick it down there. Dump all of that water out. Give this bin a good rinse. And then we just give it just a preliminary rinse. I'm gonna go in and pull out the filter cartridges. And this is where all of the trash really starts to pour out. As you can see, there's a ton of debris and turtle poop and uneaten food and all that fun stuff. 
that is built up in here that I'm going to blast out with this high powered hose. This holds little ceramic rings. This is your biological filtration. Uh, if you guys want to know more about that, I have my video on Turtle Basics kind of um, explaining what filtration is, what aspects there are to it. So I'm just going to keep it really brief for this video. And I just give this a very light rinse because I've heard that, that you can actually kill the bacteria that you've worked so hard to grow if you use uh, chlorinated water. So I just give it a very light rinse. And then I blast the filter pads. Put that on here. Take the secondary filter pad, kind of get the excess water out. Make sure that the impeller is clear of any debris. I'm going to give it a little blast because I think that it was clogging up for some reason. Make sure to thoroughly douse yourself with water as well in the process. Uh, it's real good for your legs. Nice turtle water. Um, this thing's a little too high powered sometimes and you, you can't control it. So now if you'll come over here, we can see, um, I can actually adjust the flow of this filter to either come out as a spray bar or one uh, individual little jet. I have it coming out as a jet. So what we do is you take this hose, Stick it right on the other end. Wait a couple seconds. And then I put my finger over here and sure enough, you can see there's debris being sucked up. So now I simply position this to a proper spot. Right down there is fine. I will unplug my filter so that way it doesn't suck air uh, when the water level gets low. And now I just kind of, um, I can kind of come in here, siphon out any visible debris in the water. I like to take this time to really stir everything up because I do use a substrate. So see all this suspended material right over here. So all that, I can come in here and suck it all up. And the turtles will come by, but they are such powerful swimmers that this suction does not affect them. Back there is where a lot of debris settles. And that is because if I have the filter over here, pushes the water this way, everything moves around circular. And then by the time it gets over here, it's lost its momentum and it begins to fall. So right now I'm doing things that would normally foul up the water, such as feeding in the enclosure um, or moving the filter around a lot or scrubbing their shell. But this is because all of my turtles right now are in shed. These are called scoots. And once they reach about a year of age, they begin to, oops, excuse me. They begin to pop off. They begin to pop right off. And that just is a sign of healthy growth. You might notice them shaking their butts like this. That's just them trying to kind of pop these things off. So I like to give them a little bit of help and give them this nice little scrub maybe once or twice a week. I should probably do it every day, but I don't really like to bother them. As you can see, Bean is not too big of a fan, but it's good for her. Pancake really hates this, but it's good for him. And so he needs it just like the others do. So here I am back to voicing over because lovely people enjoy being loud in my hallways. However, as you can see, Pancake has what I like to call a perfect shell, which is where he doesn't have any retained scoots or any stuck shed. And basically every individual spot on his shell is called a scoot. 
And because I raised him and I do things like scrubbing them every once in a while, he does not have retained scoots like El Tigre here, who I named just a couple days ago. You can see there's some kind of cloudy, almost white spots that are all over his shell. And this is not shell rot, they're just retained scoots, which means that he's trying to shed, but he just kind of can't. So I am scrubbing him almost every day in order to help him out with this, and he is basking a nice amount, and that will also help him get those last couple of scoots off. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this outside and wrap it up and begin the filling process. And now we can begin filling. Mm. So this hose is wet. So I'm going to grab a paper towel and dry off the hose, and then get it indoors. So now I just kind of take this. That was like okay. Okay. Gotta be respectful of people. I understand they do that. Now, we pull this in. Sorry, Sam. Okay, I'm in your shot. No, you're fine, buddy. So now, before I begin filling, the water here is heavily chlorinated for our safety, but not for the safety of the turtles. So I use a dechlorinator. I bought a half gallon because I need a lot. You can never add too much dechlor, so I just kind of pour some in. And that should be fine. That's going to help the turtles. Uh, I've noticed if you don't use dechlorinator, they begin scratching their eyes and they just look very uncomfortable. They'll close their eyes into water. It's a bit of a process. So now comes the fun part. Uh, we remember how powerful this hose is, so I need to weigh it down on the rock. <laughs> um, I'm going to try to get a little more give. <laughs> There we go. Take this, stick it down. Uh, don't do that, stick it under the water. Turn it on full blast. And send that under the wood and stick a rock on it. and let it fill. And now I always fill up maybe a half inch to an inch more than I would like the water level at. This wood acts like a sponge. It sucks up the water and then this heat lamp is so strong that it evaporates it really quickly. So I always fill up an extra amount. And as soon as you can, you're gonna wanna get your filter started. And that is because as you're stirring up these debris, it is nice for you to have the filter catch most of, of what you're stirring up. So we stick it over somewhere like here. I'm gonna wait until the water level is high enough and turn on the filter. So you can see the water's cloudy and I want it to get right above there before I turn on the filter. I'm gonna pull it over here. And I'm going to change the setting back to a spray bar. That way there's not one jet of water coming out. It helps kind of spread out the water a little more than if it was one big jet. So we are going to plug this in. Pray that it works this time. There we go, give it a little bang because clearly there's something stuck in there. It's all right, I will fix that. Turn the little knob, pray that pancake doesn't bite us. There's a little setting uh, where I can turn this knob and determine where I want the water to flow out of. This fellow, the new boy, I've decided to name El Tigre because he kind of looks like a tiger. And I really like him. All right, so as we get towards the end of this process, what I'm going to do is manually hold the hose. That way I can micro adjust and fill up to exactly where I want it. 
So here I can slow down a little bit. We're gonna keep filling. I told you I fill it up very, very high. And all of this debris that you see is going to settle within the next hour, and by tomorrow it's gonna to be crystal clear. And I'd say that's pretty full. Shake off the water, that way we don't, you know, track it through my room. I try to stay sanitary. Do a little shake, and then quickly run it back here. Hey, buddy. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> it's just a prank, bro. It's for my vlog. Social experiment. It's for my vlog. Hey, hey, it's hey, It's for hey, the vlog. Hey. Don't you want views? Huh? Merch. Buy my merch. So link in bio. Link in bio. Good <laughs> morning, beautiful world. Link in bio. After you're done torturing people that you pretend to call your friends, you can go ahead and toss the hose. I'll shut off the spigot later. I might have one or two more things that I need to rinse off. And now we just clean up. Okay, so I really wash my hands about seven or eight times after doing this. My entire arm, anything that got in the turtle water. Sam is here too. <laughs> of water as I can possibly handle just to really kill off anything that's hanging around that I don't particularly want. My best friend, the Clorox wipe. Now we make sure that this gets nowhere in the turtle pond. This will kill everything that you have worked so hard to grow, your bacteria, your fish colony, everything like that. But we want to sanitize things that we use. I use this in order to start the impeller of my filter because it was a little stuck. So we're gonna sanitize this. Down. So after you are done doing your water change, the water's a little chilly and the turtles immediately react. They're coming over here, showing interest in basking. So I usually like to leave the room for a couple minutes or maybe a couple hours and kind of let them bask and get their body temperatures up. Or they do things like this and just be weird. Pancake, relax, buddy. So now, as we can see, about 24 to 48 hours later, um, yesterday was 24 hours later, I just did not get a chance to film because I get busy sometimes, but day two, and pancakes being a butt. Stop splashing everywhere, dude. Hi, fellas. It's feeding day, so they're getting excited. But this water is absolutely clear. You can see straight down to the bottom. The water level is higher than I thought it would be, but as you can see, it is starting to go down a little bit. It was a little bit higher earlier in the week. So yeah, that's basically how I go about, you know, doing maintenance on, on their little system. So thank you all so much for watching. That's pretty much gonna do it for this video. If you enjoy what you saw, please give me a little thumbs up to let me know that I did a good job. Hit the subscribe button just if you guys wanna see more videos. If you didn't like what you saw, hit the dislike button. Let me know. I take all of your feedback in consideration and I try to fine tune my channel according to what you guys want. So thank you again for watching and I will see you all in the next one.